Hi guys, this is Cindy from Life and Times with Cindy. I'm up early this morning, I'm washing some clothes. It's a nice crisp fall morning. I love this time of the year because I don't like heat. And so this is perfect for me. It's like 68 degrees outside. Maybe getting close to 70 degrees, but um, so I thought I'd come out here and sit on the porch and tell you guys the last installment of my trip home to visit my family. Um, when I left you in the last um, video, I said that Marcus had gotten sick and that eventually my nieces got sick and then I got sick and then my sister got sick. Um, but um, on the particular day where I left off, but now I think about it. So that morning I got up early um, I think I had like some yogurt or something quick and fast because my mom wanted to go early in the morning to set up um, at the laundromat to wash my cousin's clothes and things. So uh, we made it to the laundromat um, right when it opened actually. And <clears throat> um, so while my mom was sitting there reading a book, I decided that I would take a walk um, down Main Street because I had already driven down Main Street with my sister a couple of days before, but um, one of the things I like about my hometown is that every couple of years, um, various artists will come through and they put um, murals on the walls, um, they've had different statues down Main Street, they had like beehives all over the county. And then uh, one year they had like lifelike looking uh, statues that look like people. Um, that were like spread throughout. So it's really fun to go around and look to see if you can find the various um, artists' work. And so, right now they have um, metal horse sculptures all around the town. And so I had heard that there was a horse sculpture that moved and I really wanted to see that one. I didn't see it when we were driving around. I had seen one of the horses when my sister was driving me. And then that same day we had gone um, near the library and there was another horse sculpture. And I got this beautiful picture of the background had like a mural that had been painted on the library, um, side of the library um, building. But they had also placed one of the metal sculptures there and I think we got there just like just before the sunset, so it was really pretty. I really wanted to see the one that moved. So while my mom was um, sitting, I decided to take a walk. Um, I'm trying to do better with walking. I don't always do a good job of it. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's so early in the morning. I got my morning voice. And so I walked down Main Street and it I think the horse was like maybe two blocks away. And so it didn't take me that long to get to it, but it was just nice kind of walking. It wasn't a lot of people really moving around. Um, I walked by some of the buildings, uh, one of the restaurants. And I thought I was going to get to where the farmer's market was, but I didn't have to walk that far. So there is a Coca-Cola building um, on Main Street in my town. And I don't know like the history of the Coca-Cola building. Like, was it a factory or... I know they have a um, cannon office in the area. But anyway, so I was able to find the horse. Maybe it's been out in the rain too long. 
Oh well. And I was trying to, I thought that maybe it was motion sensor so that as soon as you came near it, that it would, you know, start moving. But it actually had like a little button that you pushed. Um, so I pushed the button a couple of times and it didn't move. I was so disappointed. I don't know if it's because the rain, you know, cause it's out in the elements. So I don't know if it just stopped working because of that or did I not push? Maybe I didn't push the button hard enough. I don't know, but yeah, that was kind of disappointing. Um, so. This is where I grew up. Uh, my mom and I are taking care of some errands. We had a small break while she's washing some stuff for my cousin who's in the hospital. And so I thought I would walk down and see the horse and show you guys the town. So this mural was created for one of the um, African Americans that lived in this area probably during the time my grandparents grew up. And he started a school for blacks. Um, his home place is still here. It needs some work. But I think it's on the historical list. Um, and I think last year they created a, a mural. Um, with in his honor and it's beautiful I've come out several times and taken pictures of it and it's just really neat to see there's a lot of art in this area and there are murals on the walls and there are um, I showed you the horses the sculpture and then there is um, there used to be like bumble, a bumblebee hive part. You could go and find them all over the county. And yeah, they're really into art here. The rest of that day was kind of like a blur. I do know that we went back to the hospital to check on my cousin. And by this point, we could tell that she wasn't doing as well as she was the first couple of days that we had visited her. Um, she wasn't talking as much. Um, she did still did not want to eat. And she had told my mom that she just did not want to go back to her house. So when we left there, my, thing, my mom and I both kind of need to clear our heads and I really wanted to, I had like this checklist of things I wanted to do the week that I was there. And a lot of that was not happening. I had planned to go walking with one of my cousins um, down on the um, water one morning. That didn't happen. Um, but I had really wanted to go over to the picnic area where my family had had the family reunion because I wanted to have like some footage of that. Like I said, I've been really trying to document different areas of my hometown. So my mom took me out there. We didn't go the way that we would have gone if we had been there for the family reunion because when we got there, the, there was a gate up, so you couldn't go that way. So we ended up going down to where people put their boats in the water. They have all kinds of things you can do out there. Um, and you can even like paddle boat out on the river. Um, 
so we just we were walking, kind of reminiscing about the family reunions that we had had there in the past. Um, my mom's immediate family, like her, her and her siblings, had had a family reunion one year there um, at the same lodge that my cousins had their family reunion that past week while we were in town. And then one year, our family, um, that ex was the extended family of my cousin who was in the hospital, um, her uh, siblings and their children and my mom, who was her first cousin, um, our families got together and we had a um, family reunion um, underneath one of the picnic um, shelters areas. So we just kind of walked and we're talking and, uh, you know, just kind of reminiscing. And then after we got the footage, uh, we went back home and um, checked on Marcus. He was still about the same, but my older niece, you could tell that she really was not doing well because she just was not herself. She pretty much laid around that day and slept and just, yeah. And her sister was really upset because she didn't really have anybody to play with because Uncle Marcus was laying down and Sissy was laying down. So she just was not having a good time. Um, but that afternoon, we got a call from one of the church members that they had gone to see my cousin and they felt like something wasn't right that she wasn't coherent when she was talking and they were concerned and they asked my mom to come and check on her so my mom and i went back over to the hospital um and she wasn't she was trying to say stuff but it wasn't coming out and you could tell she was frustrated and we were kind of frustrated because when we talked to one of the nurses they said basically um yeah, we're not really sure what's going on, um, but we're going to have the family talk to the doctor when they come in for their um, rounds in the morning, because by this time it was the after late afternoon when we got back over there. And so we said, okay, um, sure. Um, so my mom called my cousin's nieces and nephews, because uh, they're her um, immediate kin. Um, this year, my cousin had lost two of her siblings, and then um, she had lost a niece, um, and also then she had, um, she was trying to get over the death of my uncle. Um, so within a span of a couple of months, she had lost the last of her surviving siblings, one of her nieces who was only in her 50s and then my uncle who was in his 80s and you could tell that she, it really had bothered her and she was feeling kind of alone living out there and she was seeing all of her family members kind of passing away um and so we said well my mom said she would be back in the morning and she would call the nieces and nephews and ask them to come and meet um, with the doctor in the morning also. So we went back home, had dinner, and then about 10 o'clock at night, we got a call from the hospital and they said um, it wasn't looking good. They had moved her to ICU. Um, and at the time we just thought, okay, they moved her to ICU. So they're gonna be checking on her, you know, more frequently. And maybe they can, by the morning, they'll figure out what's going on, why she is kind of incoherent. And um, my mom and I got to the hospital. And she called the nieces and nephews and said, look, the, they're saying that you guys probably need to come up tonight. Now, in the back of my head, I kind of knew that meant she really wasn't doing well and they didn't think she was gonna get any better. But, you know, just a couple of days before that, we had all been kind of joking and laughing, you know, around her hospital bed. So I didn't really think that that's what it meant. Um, 
but my mom and I sat there with her. And I could tell it was really bothering my mom. Um, um, you know, because my mom had been like her caregiver. She took her to a lot of her doctor's appointments when my cousin wouldn't drive herself. Um, she helped her with so much stuff. And so we just kind of sat there with her. We did try to talk to her, but she was literally, they had her on oxygen. She really wasn't, she wasn't even awake, waking up. And so we sat with her until we got the call that the nieces and nephews were there. And so when they got there, we went downstairs and we, you know, talked with them for a few minutes. But we said, no, you guys go ahead and go up. We're going to go home and go to bed and get some rest because it's been a long day. Because um, by that time, it was our second trip up to the hospital. Um, and so my mom and I got in the car to leave. And I had said goodbye to my cousin. The day before when I had visited her, you know, I kind of joked with her. I said, all right, I'll see you tomorrow, cousin Catherine. And... Um, I love you and you just hang in there and then that night when we left I said you know cousin Catherine is gonna be okay you just rest um, you know you just go ahead and rest it's it's okay and we literally had just got in the car we're just driving off I don't even think we had been gone four minutes and her nephew called us and said um, she passed away and they said they literally walked in the house I mean they literally walked in the hospital room and beepers started going off so they didn't technically really get to say goodbye so my mom felt well because she was local in the area that she would know what to tell the doctors or the hospital about you know what to do with um, my cousin's body and I'll be honest with you guys, that's the closest, that's the closest I've ever been to someone passing away. And I think for like the next couple of days, I was just kind of numb because I knew I had been talking to her a couple of days before that and joking with her and saying, look, you got to eat and, you know, so you can come home. And she kept telling us she wasn't coming home. She kept saying, I'm not going back to that house. And we thought, you know, along the lines of her going to maybe a nursing home to, you know, get her strength back and everything. It didn't even occur to me that she was saying goodbye. But I think now thinking about it, that she was saying goodbye. Um, she had made up her mind that it was time to go home to be with the Lord. And that was it. Um, so the rest of the days were kind of a blur after that. Um, I know that we ended up, you know, taking the things back to her house. And I remember walking around and saying to myself, this is probably the last time that I'm going to walk in this house. Um, she had some pictures on the wall of family, and I took a couple of pictures um, and took pictures of them. I left everything there, of course. And as I was walking out of the door, on one of her chairs was this hat that she used to wear all the time. Like, I'd always see her in that hat. And it just dawned on me I would not see her in that hat again. And I'll be honest with you guys, I I don't think that I really fully had time to grieve about the fact that she had passed because by this point, it she it made her my ninth family member to have passed since January. And I think it's just now hitting me, you know, her loss because she sp um, spent a lot of time with my mom. My mom would call me when they were on one of their little excursions in the car and I would talk to both of them and I really got to spend a lot of time with her those couple, last couple of days that she was in the hospital. And um, yeah, it's been a rough year for our family. Um, even once we came back from Alabama, Marcus had gotten a call while we were there that he had lost another family member. So since January of this year, we've lost 10 family members between the two of us. And I just keep saying, Lord, you know, 
just no more, at least not this year. We just, you know, my kids have said, we just don't want to go to any more funerals. And so I hate ending this on such a sad note. Like I said, the next couple of days were kind of a blur. And by the time that we packed up to finally come home, because we ended up staying longer because I just wasn't comfortable with Mark traveling while he wasn't feeling that well. And by that time, I started to feel not that well. And by the time we went home, yeah, I was in full blown, whatever that bug was that we had. And um, I knew then um, that more than likely when my cousin's funeral happened, I wouldn't be able to come back to it. And so kind of being able to go to her house and saying goodbye to her that way made it a little easier. But yeah, it's it's been a rough it's been a rough um couple of months and um we're still just trying to get used to our new normal with so many family members not with us anymore so i knew i wanted to wrap this up i knew this one was going to be sad so i kind of was putting it off um i remember as we were driving to my cousin's house thinking pretty soon there won't be any family members that live in that particular area where all of my family had homes um, near where my home church is and it's kind of sad um, but if they were here and could talk to me I know they would all tell me, you know, they're in a better place. And even though I know that, that's hard, you know, I want them here with me. But, um, you know, I am a believer and I do believe that they are going to a better place. So, yeah, it's, um, it was a bittersweet trip. I'm glad that we were there. I'm glad I was able to be there for my mom. I was glad that I was able to be there for my cousin. Um, in her last hours and I'm glad that I was surrounded by family and you know that just makes such a difference so like I said I hate to end it on such a bad note I mean on such I hate to end it on such a sad note but you know that's life and that has been the life that we've been living um, the last few weeks and months and so um I almost feel weird saying you know if you like this video please give it a thumbs up but you guys know that that kind of helps me um and this is a new channel and I'm trying to you know build it up and so I promise you that the next couple of videos will not be the same um so yeah if you like this video please give it a thumbs up um, if you haven't subscribed, like, what are you waiting for? And if you'd like to know when the next video will come out, all you have to do is hit that little notification bell below. So until I see you the next time, guys, have a blessed day. Bye.